Pokemon fans, Smashy here. Not too long ago, my friend Josh, aka the JWoods, reviewed Pokemon Coliseum for my channel. He did an excellent job covering the first game in the series, but now it's time for me to tackle the sequel, Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness. XD was released in 2005 for the GameCube as a direct sequel to Coliseum, picking up a few years after the story from the first game ends. Cypher, one of the enemy teams from the first game, is back to try once more for world domination, and this time their plot involves a Shadow Lugia that they claim is immune to purification. Much like its predecessor, XD has you snagging Shadow Pokemon in double battles and purifying them. While XD and Coliseum are often touted as the first full console Pokemon adventures, the games are actually based off the Pokemon Stadium games more than anything else as evidenced by the lack of wild catchable Pokemon in Colosseum and the focus on battling. Both Colosseum and XD are basically stadium, but with a story mode explaining why you're battling each person, and snagging Pokemon instead of using rentals. As a sequel to Colosseum, XD does a pretty good job. It makes much needed mechanical improvements and fixes many of the problems that plagued the first game. For example, XD introduced a wide variety of shadow moves for unpurified Pokemon to use, like Shadow Blitz, a replacement for the standard Shadow Rush, but without the annoying recoil damage. Some of these new moves, like Shadow Half, can be devastating when used at the right time, while others like Shadow Mist are laughably useless. Still, it's nice to see a wider variety of usable moves, rather than every Shadow Pokemon only knowing Shadow Rush. While Shadow Rush does make a comeback in this game, and other Shadow moves that do recoil damage were introduced as well, they're significantly less common than before, meaning you'll have fewer instances where a Shadow Pokemon you're trying to catch ends up knocking itself out at low health. There were some other minor improvements as well, like fixing the weird looking shadows underneath some older Pokemon models, and major ones like adding the ability to save and resume the game anywhere, not just from a PC. The biggest improvement that XC makes over the original, though, is the introduction of the purification machine at the Pokemon Lab. In Coliseum, you had to have a Shadow Pokemon in your party to purify them, or spam them with expensive cologne. In XD, though, all you have to do is drop your Shadow Pokemon into the purification machine, which can be accessed anywhere there's a PC in the game, and depending on how you arrange the other non-Shadow Pokemon around them, the machine will purify them for you as you walk around. This not only was a massive time saver, it allowed you to build an actual stable party of purified Pokemon as you played through the game. Shadow Pokemon don't earn experience points until they're purified, after all. So raising a party in Colosseum usually involves a lot of grinding. In XD, not only does the machine purify Pokemon much faster, but it allows you to battle with whatever Pokemon you'd like, without having to worry about leaving a slot open for Shadow Pokemon. What's more, once purified, the Pokemon you catch will have special moves they can't normally learn. Unfortunately, they didn't seem to do their homework when picking which move to give to which Pokemon in some cases, like giving a Pokemon that can already learn Hypnosis Sing, for instance. But at least some of them ended up with some useful additions. In addition to the wider variety of Shadow Pokemon attacks, XD also introduced a wider variety of catchable Shadow Pokemon, as well as some areas of the game where you can just catch regular wild Pokemon. This inclusion is a little confusing though. It seems as though Genius had already heard fans' criticism that you could only use Snag Pokemon in Pokemon Coliseum, and could not catch wild Pokemon yourself, and tried to respond to it, but completely missed the point of catching wild Pokemon in the first place. See, Pokespots were introduced in this game, which are small areas where you can leave bait out and attract wild Pokemon. However, the Pokemon are always level 10, which by the time you get to the point in the game where you can use the Pokespots is way too low level to be useful, and only 9 Pokemon were catchable between the three areas, most of which were already very common in the other 3rd gen games. What's worse is, when you leave bait at a Pokespot, you have to go do something else for a little while and then wait for your radar to alert you that a Pokemon is at the Pokespot, at which point you have to drop whatever else you're doing and catch it before it finishes eating. In fact, many irritating radars were added that interrupt the flow of gameplay. There's the radar that lets you know when a Pokemon is ready to be purified at the lab, there's a radar that lets you know when a Pokemon is at a Pokespot, and there's a radar that lets you know when Mirror B has showed up somewhere. Oh, that's right, Mirror B makes a return in this game as well, which is awesome for a number of reasons. For one thing, Shadow Pokemon you fail to capture appear in his party, so you can track him down and challenge him for a second chance at capturing them multiple times until you succeed. And for another, he gets yet another awesome battle theme. But on the flip side, you again have to drop whatever you're doing whenever he shows up, which can be anywhere on the map. If he appears in Pyrite Town or Real Gan Tower, you actually had to beat a whole Coliseum of trainers before you have a chance at battling him. These radars that keep going off really interrupt the flow of the game. I'm pretty sure by mid-game, at least half the time I spent playing involved walking all the way back out of whatever area I was in, traveling to the Pokemon Lab or wherever Mirror B showed up, doing what I had to do there, traveling all the way back to where I was before the radar went off, and then going all the way back through the area to the point I was at before. It's nice that these features were added, don't get me wrong. I just wish they were integrated into the gameplay better, so it didn't feel like everything came to a grinding halt every time a radar went off. I stopped using Pokespots entirely after the first couple times or so I ran into Wild Zubat that was too low level to even weaken or catch, and I ended up skipping Mirror B whenever he showed up in Pyrite Town or Real Gan Tower, 
because I just didn't feel like dropping the story just to go fight a bunch of trainers in the Coliseum. There were also some strange platforming segments thrown in that really slowed things down even further. Where the game really falters, though, is in some of the aesthetic and narrative choices. The one redeeming aspect of Coliseum for me, in spite of its flawed gameplay, was the atmosphere and aesthetic of the game. We were introduced to Wes, the protagonist, as he was breaking out of Snaggin's lair, with Espeon and Umbreon at his side. We discovered he was once a part of Snaggin himself, but for unexplained reasons decided to betray them and steal their Snag machine. This built up an air of mystery around the character. Was he still a villain only out for what's best for himself? Did he have a change of heart and decide he didn't want to be a part of a criminal organization anymore? Was he good all along and only joined Snagum to break them from the inside and foil their plans? It was the first time in a Pokemon game we actually had a protagonist with a backstory, and an interesting one at that. Not only was the thought of playing as a villain in a Pokemon game subversion in itself, with the protagonist always playing the hero in the main series games, but it did something with the Pokemon concept that no other game had tried before allowing you to explore a different side of the Pokemon universe. Bore had an incredible atmosphere that was reinforced by every aesthetic, from the character design, to the map design, to the music, to the art style, right down to the act of stealing other trainers' Pokemon in itself. However, while XT takes place in the same region, it lacks all the atmosphere built up in the first game. Instead of beginning the game as a badass, blowing up Team Snaggum's headquarters and making off with a mysterious machine. You play as a brightly dressed little kid doing a pointless simulation battle in a laboratory, and immediately after completing it, you are tasked with finding your annoying kid sister and running errands for the grown-ups. While luckily your sister Jovi only tags along for the first few minutes of the game, it's seriously a step down from playing as a mysterious anti-hero to play as this bright-eyed little kid. Suddenly Ore, a once desert region, is filled with all kinds of lush scenery, and even has a port town. The dubious pyrite town, once filled with criminals, cleaned up its act and is now home to a glamorous TV studio. Even the music is much more happy and upbeat. All of the characters have larger, more childlike eyes, and anything even resembling the atmosphere from the first game has been scrubbed squeaky clean. Even Hyper Mode has been renamed Reverse Mode, and Shadow Pokemon can no longer attack their trainers. This was such a damper on the whole experience for me that in spite of the numerous improvements XD made over Coliseum's gameplay, I still enjoy playing Coliseum more. All in all, XD Gale of Darkness is really a mixed bag. While it made some great improvements over Coliseum, it got just about everything wrong that Coliseum got right. Really, both Coliseum and XD just illustrate why Pokemon is better as a handheld series. Battling becomes incredibly tedious when you need to sit down in front of your TV to do it, as opposed to the portability of a handheld console or you can pick it up and play it wherever. And while consoles might have more processing power, requiring your player to sit there and play your game for long periods of time comes with its own drawbacks and restrictions. I think people want to like these games because they love Pokemon's concept, and they want to see what more can be done with it beyond what the main series games had to offer. And both of these games tried to do something different and new while keeping the core gameplay intact. But unfortunately, neither of them did an exceptional job of it. Coliseum brought a new aesthetic to the universe. It showed us more could be done with the concept of Pokemon and it did a magnificent job of creating an atmosphere that shaped the way we experienced the entire game. However, Coliseum's gameplay was clunky and lackluster, and overall just kind of dull. Meanwhile, XD improved on the gameplay and polished it up a little, but lost sight of what made Coliseum great to begin with. Still, though both games have their flaws, they at least attempted to do something a little bit more ambitious than most Pokemon titles. I hope Game Freak Let's Genius and Ordi, or some other company, attempt something like this again in the future. I'd love to see a series like this done right. Thanks for watching and stick around for more Pokemon videos. See ya!